Despite not being Rick or Alexandria focused, this episode rocked. I raved about this last season, but how they've been dealing with PTSD and guilt on The Walking Dead is so amazing. Anyone that has PTSD or knows someone with it knows you just don't get over it. So many shows depict someone suffering from it and then they just quickly move on. The fact Carol is still struggling with that guilt and it is manifesting in different ways, such as seeing the walkers how they were before they were undead, is just brilliant. And in the past couple years especially, The Walking Dead has been doing such a great job with showing the emotional toll of characters being in this new world, especially adults that are adjusting to new moral codes and rules and doing things to survive that they, they never thought they would do. Also, let's give Carol a hand for being such a sneaky badger. I like that she took the knife and then she decided to risk getting caught just to take that chocolate bar. The kingdom, the kingdom was better than what I had hoped for, and it was so populated. My big complaint last season and even before was seeing these communities and there would be no one there, just Rick's group and maybe a handful of people. It always seemed like the communities were deserted. So seeing a community with tons of people doing things, going about their everyday life was fantastic. And I don't know about you, but my favorite part of apocalypse stories is seeing how people readjust to life and how they go about rebuilding society. Usually we don't get that far in apocalypse movies, but seeing it here, a community recovering and learning to work around the outbreak is so fascinating to watch. And of course, the best part about the kingdom was Ezekiel. And Ezekiel, it couldn't have been better in my mind. I am simply amazed that they did Ezekiel so well in the show. Not to get down on the show, but a lot of us have been around Ezekiel or have known Ezekiel in the comics for some time now. So seeing it translated so well on the TV show, I just, it was so surprising and everything was so perfect. The way he talked, his mannerism, even the things in his hair, just, oh, it was so amazing. Even his voice, even his voice was how I imagined it in the comics. The King Ezekiel quotes everywhere is just plain awesome. I can't wait to see more King Ezekiel quotes all throughout the kingdom. Just so pompous. His steward Jerry, I think, was the second best part about the kingdom. He was just so animated and happy, which has me terrified because if we like him, they're gonna take him away. I like during this first meeting with Ezekiel how Morgan knew how much shit Carol was full of. I thought Ezekiel saw through her too, especially with his comment about the bitter being surrounded by the sweet and it still being worth the effort, but then he admitted that he fell for her act for a while, so now I wonder if maybe he was just suspicious and then finally confirmed it? With how skeptical Carol is of the kingdom, I kind of feel like she's taking Michonne's role in the comics, especially with the relationship with Ezekiel, which has me excited because I'm okay with Rick and Michonne being together, and I think that Carol and Ezekiel are gonna get together, and I never thought I'd be excited for a Carol romance. I'm kind of like, eh, whatever, Carol's... You know, she's Rambo. She doesn't need to be hooked up with anyone. Although I don't really remember the Rambo movie, so if he did hook up with someone, I guess that wasn't a, a good comparison. But I am actually excited about this relationship, and I think Carol needs some hot, steamy king love. But more on Ezekiel, though, because I seriously am so happy about him. His real talk with her when he dropped his king voice and just talked with her like a person just made his acting like a king more impressive to me. Actually, his acting in general was phenomenal. Usually when characters start to monologue and share their past, it, it sometimes it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, get it over with. We, we don't really care. We know what you're doing. I was captivated the entire time Ezekiel was telling his story. That was some damn fine acting. I'm curious to see if their plan to have the pigs eat the walker flesh to contaminate and poison the saviors will work. Tipping weapons with the walker blood in the comics was effective for making people ill, but will it work if they cook the meat and eat it? The last time we could have seen if cooking it helped, the group didn't live long enough for us to actually see. So Ezekiel doing this is actually really sneaky. He doesn't want to outright fight them because he doesn't want any of his people to die. And this is kind of a win-win situation for him. Either they get seriously ill from the pigs and then there's less of them and maybe they can mount a resistance or they can try doing something like that again or nothing happens to them, the pigs look bigger, Negan's like, oh, okay, they're, they're trying to cooperate, they're trying to be good, maybe I'll be a little more lenient, or just grateful, and maybe they won't take stuff out on them too much in the future. So I feel like this plan was really a win-win for them. Unless they were discovered, then that's not a win. 
With that drop off of resources, despite Negan being a crazy asshole, I'm glad not all his men are just total psycho power abusing assholes. Gavin called off his man and showed respect to Ezekiel. He's been good to us and we've taken up more than enough of his time. Not just evil people doing evil things. It's important to show multi-layered individuals and that not everyone in Negan's group is going to be completely unreasonable or just an out of control dick. It also makes things a bit more complex than, oh, they're the evil bad guys that need to die. No, there are people in that group that may have little to no choice and maybe they don't agree with everything that goes on but staying with the saviors is their best chance at survival. Maybe they do everything they can to keep other more out of control people in control. Gavin, yeah, was still an asshole, but he almost seemed a bit remorseful in what he was doing. Like he knew he had to do it, but he didn't take any pleasure in it. And to me, those type of characters are a lot more captivating than just the straight douchebag that's part of the douchebag group doing douchebag things. Lastly, I like Morgan so much better this episode already. God, I loved him admitting maybe his way wasn't right and that he can't tell others how to live his life. It's like what happened last season calmed him down and made him less rigid in his beliefs. His parting with Carol and saying he shouldn't have forced her to do anything was also really nice to hear. I personally really admire people that have their own code and morals, something that works for them but they don't force it on others. They realize that their way isn't everyone's way and forcing them to live their life the way you want likely will cause stress and grief in others. Oh, and I'd say my favorite kill of this episode was the guy cutting the walker face off. Very nice effects. The Walking Dead crew said that they're trying to push for more exciting walkers and walker deaths and I think so far they're delivering. So those are my thoughts on this episode of The Walking Dead. Please like this video, subscribe, come back for more TV reviews, and let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this episode, whether you loved it, hated it, or you were somewhere in between.